We've got Richard Hinton. Sorry, I should have introduced Ivan and Lucy. I assume you're quite well known across the museum. Richard may be less well known. He's also um, the project manager for Project I'm SRO of, um, the Wi-Fi into the public galleries. So this is the exciting one you need to listen to of all the presentations this afternoon. Um, I think actually just, just to introduce it very briefly, I mean Richard's got lots of lots of further information. I think what I'm particularly pleased about this is just like when the museum was plumbed for physical wiring a few years ago, we did it in a good strategic way that this project is, is actually going about Wi-Fi in the public galleries in a very enterprise important way which will serve the museum well for the next uh, decade. So over to you Richard. So hello everyone, uh, I'm Richard, I work in the ICT department and I'm happy to be working on the uh, project to roll out Wi-Fi to the public areas of the museum. I'm going to start by dispelling a little bit of a myth. You actually need quite a lot of infrastructure to provide wireless services, as I found out. Um, I'm going to be talking a bit about that now. So what are we delivering? Well, we're providing a foundational infrastructure that's going to give us Wi-Fi and location services in all of the public areas of the museum. And by location services, I mean it gives us the capability to be able to track um, anonymously and send content to smartphones based on their location within the museum, which is a really powerful capability. We're going to provide a scalable solution to meet future demands. So just as Dave said, in the 80s and 90s, there was a huge investment in providing network infrastructure to connect PCs and printers. Well, we need to be looking at the future where increasingly more services are delivered wirelessly and expected to be consumed wirelessly. So we have that to, to have the infrastructure there ready. So ultimately, public Wi-Fi is the enabler. It's not as sexy, but we can put the infrastructure in to put all those really clever services on top, like mobile apps, augmented reality, and delivering location-based content. So what does it cost to put this infrastructure in? We have a budget of half a million, and a third of that is the Wi-Fi hardware itself, so things like the wireless LAN controllers that are going to offer us the resilient core function. And the more obvious bit, which is the 160 wireless access points that will be across all the museum galleries, and they're going to help us do the triangulation and, and uh, pinpoint devices so that we can send content uh, to them. You could probably just have standard Wi-Fi service with about half the access points, but the real key benefits come from the location element. And as you can see, over, over well, about 40% of the costs are actually the cabling. So we've got to connect up our core Wi-Fi infrastructure to those wireless access points. And there's a lot of complexities around dealing with a, a building that's so old as South Kensington and Tring. So there's a lot of concerns in the, in the planning there, which is why we have about 10% of the costs for project management. That's things like managing the cabling installation engineers, putting together technical specifications, health and safety, and those sorts of things. And because this is leading edge technology, and because it's a complex installation, we've got a 20% contingency. So why are we doing this? Why is the museum spending half a million pounds? Well, Wi-Fi is increasingly seen as a utility. People expect it, and people are more and more consuming their content and accessing services on their smartphones wirelessly. So we need to have that infrastructure in place to meet that. We can't be playing catch-up. And it has been proved a really successful uh, proof of concept has been the Treasures Gallery, where we've had Wi-Fi installed in the public space there since November of last year. So we had 18,000 unique visitors in the first three months, which extrapolates out to around 70,000 a year. Now, if, if we push that out to having Wi-Fi in all of the public spaces, we could be looking at half a million visitors using that service. So what are the benefits to the museum? Well, we can support the front of house team. They've got access to the really useful management information on where people are using their devices, how they're moving around the museum. We can get content to their staff tablets in the front of house so they can get to, to, uh, to more information easily. And again, it's being able to push the location-based contextual content to people's devices based on where they are. And there's less reliance on having to, to look at small fixed notices that are on the exhibits. It's a huge enabler for revenue growth. It's a very marketable thing for sponsorship and for things like events and conferences. And it gives us opportunities to offer promotions 
and other offers to, uh, to visitors. And it also showcases the NHM brand as a leading edge museum. And we can promote visitor interaction. So what are the benefits to the visitors? Well, one of the obvious ones is it removes a cost barrier. There's no data roaming charges when you use our Wi-Fi, especially for foreign visitors who could rack up huge charges if they, if they try to use smartphones abroad. And it's better access to more deeper, richer content for visitors. We can also engage with people while they're queuing. So there'll be a targeted amount of Wi-Fi available in the queuing area, so people can actually start interacting with the NHM while they're waiting to come in. Most people might just want to know where the toilets and cafes are, and we can provide that information a lot easier if they can just connect and, and look themselves. And again, it's being able to, to give promotions and, and allow people to opt in to other forms of engagement. And the key principles we're using in this project are it's an enterprise approach. It's too big, it's too important to do in a piecemeal fashion. It has to be done in a consolidated way with the right resources and focus in order to get it done right. We've got to provide a secure and resilient solution. So it's one that we can upgrade and expand as we need economically in the future. And again, it's modular and sustainable in its design. We need to ensure there's minimal impact to the heritage areas. So you know, there's 160 access points that will have to go in there somewhere. And a really important one, we have to prepare the museum for this service. We've got to warm them up to start thinking about how they can use the, the, the Wi-Fi. So what we're going to do is, in September, is provide a, a demo app that's going to showcase some of those capabilities. And this is just a timeline of when things are happening. So as I said, we've had Treasures Gallery up and running with public Wi-Fi as of November last year. And since then, we've been planning how we're going to do the rollout. And starting with Earth Galleries, in support of the Volcanoes and Earthquakes app, we're hoping to have the Earth Galleries and some of the other key areas like Central Hall, and uh, restaurants and cafes installed by December of this year. The remaining areas and tring will be done between January and uh, July of next year. And then there'll be a long tail of optimization and tuning of that service, which actually begins up in phase one. So where does it all lead to? Well, again, this is an enabling project. So we can put in the infrastructure, and we have to let the museum know what it's capable of doing but it enables so many things. We can support provision of more apps, step-by-step -step navigation and other location services. We can get that all-important location circulation information, see where people are moving around. We can offer custom tours and other navigational aids and things like op online maps and that deeper, richer content for people to be able to access. In short, it takes us to a lot of exciting places. So I realize I've hit you with a lot of information in one go. Um, I don't know if there's any time for questions, but you're welcome to email me at a later point if there's anything particular you want to ask. Yeah, spot on. Actually, there is time for questions, almost uh, miraculously. Um, that was eight minutes. So, uh, has anyone got questions? Okay, for the for the people online, um, how how's it going to be linked to the collections database? So, off the top of my head, I can't think of how that would be done, but it is certainly something that we could look into. There's a lot of these enablements that we can do, yeah. and uh, if you've got any details, if you want to comment, contact me after, we can work out how we can link in with that. Sorry, I have no idea why my phone is playing music <laughs> at the moment. Um, are there any other, any other questions? Okay. Well, no, it's just a very general point. Can you put the flat <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, this is going to be in the first phase, so we can we can bump it up a little bit. There, it's not a problem. Sorry, yeah, further. Um, you mentioned outdoor queuing areas. Will it extend to the data centre courtyard as well? Yes, it will. Yeah. So, yeah, the question. So the final question was to do with whether the uh, Wi-Fi will extend into the um, into the courtyard and into the garden areas as well. Uh, pretty much all the areas, I think, in terms of the museum it's grounds a, as well, isn't yeah, it? Fine. Certainly all the important areas. Okay, any more questions? Okay, looks like we're okay in that case, in which case, thanks, Richard.